guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Datadog. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, cloud and containers technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Okay, so the first thing which I am going to talk about how to monitor docker using datadog now <clears throat> when i say docker that means what so see here understand the 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 technical aspects so here uh, we have one machine it can be windows and linux i don't care okay and this is a datadog so i'll just write a datadog here datadog we have and uh, here we have an agent installed inside this which you did yesterday successfully now agent will ask certain information agent will ask a certain information that means agent will ask information about the linux box itself that's a matrix yesterday you did it so that check was enabled actually if you notice that the command was config check so you might have seen that many checks were enabled actually okay so that was a default check now question is there is one more tool which is installed docker okay and docker is running few containers okay docker is running few containers so and there is one another tool which is installed apache in this server and Apache, uh, I assume that all of you know that it's a web server. Apache, Nginx, IES, these are the web server. So Apache is running. So now, so here, this uh, agent job is to send the, all the metrics to the data dog. Agree with me, all of you? Yes. But how this agent will come to know what are the metrics of docker i repeat please focus on my keyword i said metrics of docker and metrics of apache because agent by default is not configured to gather the docker metrics apache metrics like that here i am setting a pattern actually instead of docker it can be any other tools also instead of apache also it can be any other tools also like a tomcat or uh, Jenkins, Jira, any application, any tools it can be. So how can you configure the agent? So agent will gather the metrics from the different external tools and that we call it integration, agent integration. That means by default, when you install the agent, that capturing capability is not enabled. So you have to do certain things to enable that event. That means I need to inform agent, hey agent, can you go and take the data from the docker? Can, can you go and take the data from the Apache? Can you go and take the data matrices from matrices from MySQL database? So I need to tell agent and that telling process is called integration process with the data. Are you understanding so far? Yes. Now the, now the question is, now the question is, you know, this is a very important. Each tool you integrate, fetching data process, fetching matrices from these tools is different. I repeat, different. So you have to know, for example, if you know, if you want Apache information, so how the agent will talk to Apache and how the Apache will expose that matrix is a different than Docker. Docker process different than MySQL. So what I'm trying to say here is you need to know the tools as well because understand that you are in the world of monitoring. You are in the world of production server. You are supposed to know platform tools and applications and runtime everything. Then only you can monitor. How can you monitor? How can you set up a monitoring without knowing a tool? 
at least I'm not saying you you have to become an expert, but you should know what tools you are monitoring, how it works, what matrices they will expose it. So you are supposed to know. But anyways, I'll teach you step by step so you can try to replicate it. Okay, so now this is the Docker, this is the Apache, this is the MySQL, it can be any other tools also. So how to inform? How to how to first of all how to see the matrices of Docker? Forget about the agent now. How to see the matrices of Apache? How to see the matrices of MySQL and so on? So guys, here, here, you know what? One thing because Docker has been developed recently. So Docker automatically without any configuration. Docker expose the matrix at certain locations at Docker means I don't need to configure Docker to get their matrix. Docker automatically exposes it. Why? All the not only Docker latest all the tools which you you see developed in last five years. They have a team built capability where they at a certain place they expose the matrices. So that is one thing is done. So right now at least one thing is clear like I, I don't have to configure anything at a docker site because docker automatically publish their own matrices and just we need to inform agent hey agent please go to that docker and capture this matrix and send to the data dog make sense guys all of you so does it uh, publishes all the matrices docker uh, most of the commonly used matrices you have it if you want to customize it you say no I want the complete detail of uh, docker then you have to modify the docker configuration All right then we have to customize it customize. as per our need right yes yes yeah. okay now the the question is second tool Apache Apache is not developed in the last five years and they are not following the CNCA process also so what to do so Apache First thing, forget about the agent. First thing, Apache need to expose the matrices. That means we need to configure Apache now. See, Docker, you don't need to configure because they expose the matrices already. Agent will go and take the matrices. But in, in case of Apache, by default, Apache do not expose the matrices. So now the question is, how can you enable Apache to expose the matrices? That is the learning process of Apache. I'll show you that one steps, but yeah, gradually you have to get comfortable with it. So now you know what Apache, there is a one module called in Apache. I'm talking about not Docker, not Datadog, no agent. I'm talking about only Apache. So in Apache, there is one module called mod status. Okay. There is one module called mod status. So that module, what they are doing because it's a web server, right? So web server, so that module which you configure, this module we configure. So this module will take the all the data from the Apache and it's Apache module only. I, I'm not going out of Apache and then publish at certain port number endpoint. This is the endpoint. So that means anyone who wants the Apache information, he can go to this endpoint and fetch that matrix. Are you understanding? All of you? Yes, Rajesh. So what I need to tell, hey agent, can you go to this endpoint? So first you have to configure it endpoint, I will teach you. And then we have to tell agent, hey agent, can you go to that endpoint and fetch the matrix and send to the data dog. So this is the one process. Now MySQL, see MySQL is a database. So they cannot publish on the endpoint. Remember, MySQL is not having web server capabilities. They cannot publish at the certain URL, HTTP, blah, blah, blah. So what MySQL is doing? You have to enable the MySQL. So they, so MySQL will store all the data matrices in one of the database. So there will be one database which is called performance schema, I think if I remember correctly. So that database, they will store all this information. Now the question is, Let's say you are a human being, okay? And you want to get the data from this MySQL table, a uh, MySQL database and table. So what you what you need? What you need? What you need? 
so you need ip address of database server you need a port number you need a username and password access and all correct na yeah so same thing yes. agent same thing agent also need agent need permission user id and password and they can go and fetch this record from this database performance database and send to the data doc so what i am trying to tell you here is different tool different process different configuration options so here this is configuration is different this configuration is different this configuration is different but agent configuration is a very same how and what is that i'll show you that so yeah please remember that tomcat is different jboss fetching information from jboss is different uh, any other application which you are running that will be different and so on so like that 500 integrations datadoc supports so out of 500 if you want to integrate 500 you need to know how to publish the matrices for the particular tool and then then next thing will come to into the picture configure the agent for those stuff all of you are understanding right yes yeah so this is something <clears throat> this is something which we have okay so now demo time guys so i'm showing you the docker demo so first thing this is my machine and docker demo lab you can ignore it <coughs> if you want <coughs> but at least demo if you see so later point of the time so, you can do that every time do we need to start it in can we save this putty session like or do we need to every time browse this ppk file and start from fresh uh, right now don't think about the automation because we are starting no this linux and all so get a habit of doing manual at least 10 times so you'll get a confidence because if you automate now no you'll not know that you will not remember the steps which you did it okay so colors everything you can do that but yeah not now learn this i am just showing you manually again so here send to us okay and i'll become a root because i don't want you to struggle with permission issues agent installed uh, you can check this so system system ctl uh, status data doc age and you see it's running okay yes. so now Uh, agent installed. Now, first thing I have to do this one. So this whole documents. Uh, this whole documents. Just a minute. Ha. So this document, we are going to refer it. So see here, how to enable Docker container monitoring in Data Doc. So first thing. uh you have to enable the docker uh, data doc process monitoring did we enable this data data doc uh, process monitoring so that's what um, it's it's for docker you are talking right no no not not docker i no, said we tried this so that's what i mean they actually stated like we had issues uh, uh, enabling it okay i mean one or two issues is okay but i'm saying overall i mean uh, are you guys uh, have you done it or not i mean overall one or two people we can fix that issue overall yeah i also couldn't yes no one and no rajesh we are still facing issues with unable process monitoring mm -hmm. and what was the challenge why you did, did not do that if you could open that link uh, on your uh, blog the last uh, command that we used we are able to view it but uh, the okay. grep command that we use the concatenation tool okay i did not do the grep actually so basically i felt now can you scroll down this is yeah we yeah. finished till here we saved the file and we ran this command data dog agent grep process okay did you see that uh yes we saw we this as well as other lines also there are some other lines yeah. on that yeah that the process really we got multiple lines uh, did you validate it on the data dog website Yeah, we uh, went and tried validating that. We did not see anything. Yes, it is not updated. The process details are not popping up on the Linux server. 
centos okay. we'll see that see uh, this is a troubleshooting uh, checklist each one of you please note of it whenever there is a very simple steps very simple steps first thing whenever there is no updates happening that means it is our mistake now what mistake number 1 check the token api token which file you to check you know that okay check the api token second thing check the site just note it down in your steps because i have been repeating these steps i am telling you this steps to validate multiple times and third thing i felt yesterday many people did the mistakes in site also that means they enroll five but uh, they are configuring one so somehow i didn't know, i don't know how come this confusion has occurred so that is it so when you want to troubleshoot at least some reports are not going so first thing you see your uh, api token is good second see the site and third one see the agent is running or not fourth command i gave it you data dog config check also and config also so these are the commands is a same thing so if you say it's not running i will do the same thing i will not do anything else out of it so if you can do also yourself that's a super okay anyways we'll come back to this so yes coming back to the my main point right now okay i'll write it here also because you probably you'll forget it how to troubleshoot this is a basic one troubleshoot agent not reporting to data dog so step number 1 verify api token verify site verify site site means region or whatever it is region and third thing uh, third thing i forgot anyone remember third thing what was that anyone agent is running ha uh, agent is running or not on any changes you do in the configuration file datadog.yaml file you have to start this remember if you don't start it then how how datadog will help you it's a simple process okay so this is the three things you do and i'm damn sure about it your issue is fixed okay okay so that is the thing so uh, what i was trying to tell you is ha huh, so this is the datadog integration uh, docker integrations so first you have to enable the source process monitoring how to do that this is the steps which we shown you today we'll do some troubleshooting then install the docker server in the machine now the question is how to install the docker server for this is the tutorial for for it now if you if you read this tutorial you have a step number 1 yum method method number 1 and you have a method number 2 rpm okay and this is a script okay so you know this is little little better for me i mean handy for me so what i will do i will run this command i mean this command because i don't have to copy paste too many commands for that so i'm doing it in front of you you see that downloading now some of you will say rajesh i don't understand this command or what exactly happening this one so this slowly slowly gradually you will build this basically this command will download one shell scripting okay this command will run that shell scripting okay and this command will enable the docker this command will start the docker that's all so yeah slowly you will have to understand system ctl command is to work with the services okay just like services.msc yesterday you work with windows right so this is the services so i'm installing the docker right now it's in progress let it get completed Okay, so done. Now I'll do the enabling part. 
and then starting the part done okay so docker is installed you see that here and it started also so this is the this step is completed back to this install docker server is done enable docker integration with data doc this you have to do that so basically I just said no docker installation is only needed why because docker automatically expose the matrix so I don't need to configure docker anymore okay so uh, what to do so here enable docker integration with data doc that means here I am saying hey agent go and pick it pick it up the inform I mean uh, matrices from docker this is called enable docker integrations so now what to do so now this process you have mentioned at a data doc website also so I'll go to the integration here click on the integration here all of you please focus on it all integrations can be done through here and here you see these are the integration installed so here how come uh, maybe from the previous demo actually okay so none of the servers right now I am having it's installed but these are the not installed so what to do I'll click on the docker like this for you will not be installed and here I'll click on the configuration now I will have a little bit of peace of mind I will read it overview and even though if I don't understand I will still read it then I'll move on move on and see that what are the matrices you, I might get it so these are the matrices you get it from the docker wonderful now I'll just go and read little bit of host also and then come back to configuration I will read it two to three times now because I understand that you don't know the docker but first step number one is to all the docker that I did it step number two you have to give a permission to the DD agent to access the docker now this command is Linux command where you are modifying the DD agent and saying hey I am giving you permission to the group called docker and so DD agent can fetch and talk to the docker and then step number three you have to go through the configuration directory conf.d docker d and you have to modify this and enable this restart the agent look at the status did you understand these all steps configuring the agent all of you yes, yes. so I'll just run this command it's a Linux command and after that I'll go to the conf.d so where can I go etc conf.d sorry etc data dog agent and here you have a conf.d now guys mind it uh, conf.d is having all the integrations available you see that so what's integration so here you have you see that uh, fluentd github related nginx here you have mem memcache many other tools which you see here so docker is docker d right here it is uh, apache where is that apache.t here tomcat where is that t t t t t here it is so all these locations uh, this is the locations where you can enable the integrations so for this i'll go for docker and now you see this file which is conf.yaml.tv for a certain file which is not enabled actually why because uh, remember that datadog agent read only the yaml file for configuration changes is it yaml file no it's not yaml file how can you make it in yaml file so instead of copying it uh, instead of moving it i'm copying it because as a backup i want to keep it this is the one so now this file will be read by datadog agent this file will not be read this is a directory so that means any integrations you have this pattern are you comfortable all yes. of you yes so this is a yes. something which we have it okay so now i have to do this one so guys i have to modify this file and that's the reason i want you to be comfortable with vi editor a lot because lots of configuration like that you have to do so here this entry i have to make it in the file call uh, here it says docker daemon.yaml but any yaml will work so even though if i make a changes in this conf.yaml it will work why they are saying docker daemon this is a old documents they have not modified so it's okay any yaml file a data dog agent will detect the things so can i go and modify this file using vi editor enter okay one more thing 
Uh, yeah, that is the thing. So VI editor, let's say if you are not comfortable, then you can use Win SAP and change the windows, move into the Linux. That also you can do that. But you know that will complicate the process if you are not comfortable with the Linux. So rather use the VI editor. It's just very straightforward. Now anything which is with a hash, these are the comment. Any anything which is not with a hash, these are not a comment. Okay. So this is the stuff. Okay, so here init insta init config. So every config file in the integrations of datadog you will see init config and then instances. So here you know you can you can uh, add multiple instances of Docker also. Right now only one. So what is the address of Docker where you can get the data? This is the address of Docker. So here URL, this is the address and this is the tag you are doing. Whatever the matrix you are pushing from, uh, pulling from here will be tagged with this one. Okay. So this is something which will do that. So copy this line, only specific line, go to the area and insert and one space and then paste it. There's a one extra hyphen actually. It's a YAML file, so be careful. Now, one, two, uh, URL, three, four. What is this? This is the tag. So new tag names, true. Okay. So this is the tag which you're giving. You can give a more tag also. So any other tags also, true, false, what exactly? So you can say this is a server colon which server this is docker server. This is the one new tag you added. So this is the one instance I added of docker and in for the agent you can do multiple also. Understood guys all of you? Yes. Okay so I'll just skip it read only more save it and what they are saying restart the agent so system ctl restart data dog hyphen agent i did this and status sorry status running now i'll check the data dog agent check uh, config check config check so now here i see uh, do you see the docker has come here yes so config check i did now config also you can see the file here uh, because i modified just now so there is no need to check this you can check the health of the agent also and Everything is okay. Healthy components. All these command I shared with you in the first first uh, Linux only. So you can. So after we update the YAML file, is it necessary that we check the data config? Do the data config check step. See, I'm running this command so you can validate your work, whether you did it right or not. Getting my point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These are the well validation command. Otherwise, you have to go and check again YAML file and all and stuff. So I did this, restart the agent. And can we go and check the status of a Docker? So can we go ahead? So for that, I, I'll be in flow a little bit. This I did, I showed you also. These are the things I did. These are the commands you have it. And these configurations I did. And finally, this is a screenshot of it. Have patience a little bit. This is a way to validate also. Okay, this command. And after that, install integration. So here, I I have already installed last because I'm using my old account. Only one time you have to do it. Uh, so I did it and install integrations. So that I did it. And after that, we'll create a few containers. So this command you can run blindly. Okay, these containers. Uh, Docker, if you want to run, learn. Again, you have my channels. You have few videos. You can check it out. So for that also, but I'm not teaching you Docker right now, just rather than running. So this command you're running three containers. I got it. Docker PS. Look at the name of the container. Uh, here the screen. 
this is the name of the container brave sad jolly these are the three containers i am running so now after that you go to the datadog website and validate it so let me do uh, let me do that uh, rajesh sorry to interrupt uh, could you all uh, can you shortly say what is docker what is a container so it will be easy for us to for non technical person to understand that okay yeah good uh, yeah so like that if you have some question no keep asking in between it will it will be helpful for you also so i'll put it in a very simple way because it's a very huge topic so how to run applications so earlier you were running the application in physical server correct now okay physical server means your laptop example is laptop can you run one application server there i think you know that right yes after that we migrated and we started running a application in virtual server virtual server so virtual server means the vms we call it in short so vms you find in aws right now the one which i am running here this is a vm actually provided by aws i gave it to you all of you vm only azure vmware so these are the vms actually okay azure and all so earlier we were uh, now from last 20 years we are running application in virtual server in data center i'm talking the data center okay and now we are running application in container so and container who manage the container docker docker is a platform just like aws is a platform docker is a platform and docker will create a container and container will have your app okay so this is the docker now you can think of container is app and let's say setup time is reduced edge so let's say one day it will take virtual machine 5 minutes it will take and here one second if you noticed if you might have noticed these are my three application of one two and i got it within a second actually so did you understand the high level what is a docker and what is a container all of you hello yes yeah so now you want to know more about the docker and container okay so i would say think of docker is a platform and using that you are running container which is applications how to run it i just showed you few command basics command okay these are the command to create a container so this command will create one container two container three containers and i can i have this container here and i can use it you can create apache also let me show you rather than talking so docker run hyphen d httpd enter so i create one container of apache okay right now right now what you will do you will install the apache in the vms correct which i'll do i'll show you the demo but here what i did using container within a within a second you got the apache see here apache and what is ip address of this container so docker inspect this one ip address is this one and i am accessing http uh, no curl okay. command line i am using to access that website a browser no so see here is apache so how much you time you spend nothing almost second so this is the world which you are you, you are in you are in the world container world and you need to learn docker as a uh, see you know laptop very well correct now from last 20 years we are using this one we know very well so now you need to know as sub docker and kubernetes so i'll just give you some hints in your for to your mind that means if you want to run container i mean if you want to run application you should run in container and container will be powered by docker but yeah you have to explore this more into the docker and container okay you can check my videos i know on the the channel which is the devops school there i have taught in detail uh, and stuff like that make sense guys hello 
Yes, Rajesh. These are the my channels. You can check it out. Hmm. Okay, so now let's move on. I was doing something else. Little got. Uh, huh. So here I was trying to validate it. So can you go to the uh, doc, uh, data doc? Cancel this and go to the here and the infrastructure. And you see the here containers. And see three containers I'm expecting. See the you are seeing the CPU and RAM of only containers. Now here I am getting a five containers, four containers. How come I created three? No, let me check. Okay, okay, yeah, one is Apache. So four containers I am having. See the match the name Jolly Sad Brave. So here Jolly Sad Brave. And you see that each container is consuming how much CPU, how much RAM, and how much status started up, blah, blah, blah. So this is called container monitoring, so Docker monitoring. Make sense, guys, all of you? Yes. Okay, so now we completed. So can I validate whether a matrix is coming or not? By the way, I saw the matrix in front of me only, but formally, how do I validate? So I'll go to the Docker, I mean, data doc explorer and I'll see that matrix is coming from that machine or not. So here matrix, what matrix? Docker matrix. The matrix, same the matrix which you have seen it uh, at the time configuration. So I see that a CPU limit now from my machine is coming or not. So by the way, uh, where is my, yeah, this is the one. And here, this is the matrix which you see that my cursor, follow that cursor is coming. So you can see the CPU limit for the containers also. Yeah, these are the containers and stuff like that. Make sense guys, all of you. So this integration is completed. Now you have a data. Now you have a data at the data dog and this is you. You will do what? You will do the exploration of the data. You will do analysis of the data. You will do the alerting on that. You will do the dashboarding on that. These are the things you will do that. Make sense? Yes. yes. So this is a, uh, this is the, this is the how to monitor Docker using data doc. Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopsschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, we will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, if you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, ETC, kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. You would have access to 100s of playlist and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership. Enjoy!